Welcome to all of you. This is uh, our 90th consecutive season, and uh, believe it or not, I was not there at the first one, but uh, we're very happy to, to be back again with a regular season. Um, the uh, city band is 90 consecutive years, but it goes back a lot farther. It goes back to 1849, uh, when a group of young men formed a band in Lake Mills, which they uh, uh, was short-lived because Somewhere along the way, they heard about gold in California, and those young men disappeared. So it was a few years before we had a band again. We're not likely to face challenges like that today, but we certainly faced an unusual challenge over the last year with the COVID pandemic. And uh, last year, we managed to keep that consecutive uh, string going. We managed two, a brief season of two concerts. Uh, we rehearsed outdoors, and. Uh, this year, we began our rehearsals with uh, the protocol that the high school band has been following. Uh, we have special masks with uh, a slit in the middle so you can fit your uh, mouthpiece in there. We had uh, uh, covers over the bells of the instruments to prevent any uh, uh, aerosol spray coming out of those. And uh, uh, we, we were practicing in a, a gym at the school with six feet on either side and 10 feet uh, front to back. So we've been following those recommendations, but recently the Centers for Disease Control have changed their recommendations and said if you have, have had the vaccination, that there's no need to be masked or maintain social distancing indoors or out. So as a result, in the last couple of weeks, I've basically have left it to the band members to decide what they're more comfortable with. Uh, and as you can see, most of them decided to, to uh, uh, not do that, not do those anymore. So I think uh, we all can agree that uh, the fact that these things are changing a little bit is something that we're all glad to see and hope that we've rounded a corner here and that uh, uh, soon we'll return to whatever normal has become. So tonight what we're going to be doing is uh, we're opening our concert with a theme around the world of music. We'll be taking you musically to a number of different locations around the globe. And, but before we take off on that trip, we're going to start the concert as we always do with God bless you. wander off to a number of different locations. We're going to begin with a song that originated from a medieval German folk song 
The current melody was composed by Friedrich Wilhelm Muller after World War II, and it was performed by the Oberon Kirchen Children's Choirs in Europe. English lyrics were written by Antonio Ridge, and in 1953, they, their performance of the song hit the charts in the UK. It was number two on the charts for five weeks in a row. More pertinent maybe to us is that if you were in elementary school in the 50s or 60s, you, you may remember singing Valerie, Valdera, Valerie, because that's what we're going to play right now. The Happy Wanderer. I'd like to mention to you that the uh, Chamber of Commerce tonight is sponsoring the concert and they have ice cream over at the shelter, I believe, the Dixie Cups, with the little wooden spoons, you know, you love that. So if you'd like one, head on over there. Um, now as we take off, our first location in this musical trip is close to home. The Bell of Chicago is a march composed by John Philip Sousa in 1892 exactly one week before he was discharged from the Marine Corps to start his own band, which was coincidentally going to be headquartered in Chicago. Um, that new band, uh, he intended the march to be kind of a tribute to the women of Chicago, and, but the re reviews were not uniformly positive. One reviewer said, Mr. Souza evidently regards the Chicago Bell as a powerful creature with the swinging stride of a giant a voice like a foghorn, and feet like sugar-cured hams. <laughs> well, despite the one less than positive review, the march was considered his best up until that time. And here it is, the Bell of Chicago.
Thank you. From Chicago, we're going to move to a Broadway musical by Sheldon Harnick and Jerry Bach that portrays the life, uh, uh, life for Jews in Imperial Russia in about 1905. The story centers on Tevya, a milkman in the village of Anatevka, who attempts to maintain his Jewish religious and cultural traditions as outside influences encroach on his family's lives. He also has three strong-willed daughters who wish to marry for love rather than for an arranged marriage that the father decides. So here's a medley from, you probably guess what the, the musical is, Fiddler on the Roof. It includes the theme, Fiddler on the Roof, Sunrise, Sunset, and Matchmaker.
But now we're heading to Austria by way of Rodgers and Hammerstein. In their 1959 musical, The Sound of Music, near the end of Act Two, Captain von Trapp and his family sing this song during a concert as an act of Austrian patriotism in the face of pressure being put on him to join the, Na the Navy of the Nazi Germany. Although it's often thought this is an Austrian national song, it was actually composed for the musical as the sublim subliminal goodbye to their homeland as they prepare to sneak out of the country following the Anschluss or the, the Nazi takeover of Austria. It is also the last song Rodgers and Hammerstein wrote together because Oscar Hammerstein died of stomach cancer within months of its completion. So here is Edelweiss. Sabre Dance by Aram Kachaturian was written for a ballet where the dancers displayed their skill with swinging sabers. Kachaturian was an Armenian. His piece became his most famous work, and it was something that he resented. He felt a lot of his other pieces were better quality. But if we do our job right, it is a piece that you will almost certainly recognize. It's considered one of the signature pieces of 20th century popular music, and here it is, the Sabre Dance.
Now we head to the Korean Peninsula to hear three delightful Korean folk songs that give us a glimpse into another culture. The three songs include Betul Nore, which roughly translates to battle song, Odolgogi, and Ariang, which is estimated to be about 600 years old and considered the unofficial national song of Korea. So here it is, Korean folk song medley. Titanic in 1998 
told the story of the ill-fated maiden voyage of the White Star Line's unsinkable ship. In one scene, Jack asks Rose if she'd like to go to a real party. So they descend to the lower decks where the third-class ticket holders uh, had booked passage. This piece was the background music to that party in third class. It's a traditional Irish song performed by the group Gaelic Storm. This, here is an Irish party in third class. Now we're going to travel, we're moving from a sinking ship in the North Atlantic to a location much closer to home. Just a mile or two east of here, right out that way, is Aslan State Park. Between approximately 1000 AD and 1250 AD, the ancient village of Aslan served as a northern outpost to the Middle Mississippian culture, which was centered at Cahokia near East St. Louis, Illinois. The people who settled Aslan built large flat-topped pyramidal mounds and a stockade around the, vi the village. By 1300 AD, they disappeared. The composer Michael Sweeney, a Wisconsinite, has written a piece intended to express the mystery of the site. So here it is, Aslan, City of Mystery.
<laughs> All right. Uh, we'll continue on, I guess, at this, at this point. Uh, the next song was composed by a Swiss accordion player in the 1950s. Swiss accordion player, some of you are heading for the door, but no. This, this is a good song. It's become a tradition in Germany at Oktoberfest, and now is familiar throughout the Western world. In fact, it's very familiar at Badger Games for the last 25 years. You'll recognize it, and you will also recognize that this is an audience participation album. So stand up, limber up, and get ready to do the chicken dance. Yeah, huh? Come on. Contain your enthusiasm, please. You know, it's, it's getting a little wild. Uh, in the interest of social distancing, you won't, we won't ask you to grab your neighbor in that middle section and twirl her around, okay? Unless it's a family member, then, then you can twirl them all you want. But. All right, here we go with the, the chicken dance. We, you know, we see a certain percentage of participation or we keep doing this, you know, just so you know. do it again. Okay. Forty Second Street is a, a street in New York, but it's also a Broadway musical that's based on a 1932 novel and a 1933 Hollywood film adaptation. It's the story of a dictator dictatorial director, Julian Marsh, and Peggy Sawyer, a chorus girl who gets her big chance due to the injury of the lead actress. And, and uh, Julian Marsh says to her, listen kid, you're going out there a youngster, but you've got to come back a star. So, one of the numbers in the second act was a little ditty about running off to Niagara Falls after getting married. And so here, by way of Broadway and 42nd Street and Niagara Falls is Shuffle Off to Buffalo.
The next piece we're going to play, uh, maybe stretching a little for traveling around the world, but uh, the Coast Guard does travel around the United States. This piece is a traditional march by Carl King, the Coast Guard's march. Carl King lived the boyhood dream that many boys had in the late 19th and early 20th century. He dreamed of running away to the circus. Well, but he acted on his dream and literally did run away to the circus. There he became a virtuoso baritone player and had his first compositions published at the age of 17. He later went on to be a famous circus band leader and a conductor for many years of the Fort Dodge Iowa Municipal Band, which is now named after him. Here is the Coast Guard's March. Now we head over to Scandinavia, the music of Norwegian composer Edvard Grieg. In the Hall of the Mountain King from his Fyrgid Suite No. 1 depicts the story of Piers' adventure inside the Mountain King's castle. Beginning softly and fairly slowly, the music gradually increases in tempo and intensity as Pier hides and tries to escape from the king and his trolls. Just in the nick of time, Pier escapes safely as the mountain collapses. So, Piers in the Hall of the Mountain King.
All right, we're going to move across the North Sea now to Scotland. Highland Echoes is a fantasy on old Scottish melodies. These melodies include Highland Dance, The Lass of Gorai, an old bagpipe tune, Blythe Blythe, and Merry Was She, Scotland the Brave, and Old Lang Syne. This is Highland Echoes.
Okay, next week we're going to work on how to take a bow. We're going to end our travels back in the USA with a song that I think you'll recognize. And it is, good news, an audience participation number. <laughs> yeah. This one is a little, a little easier to grasp, I think, than the chicken dance. Strike up the music that band has begun. Yeah. Yeah. I think you got it. Okay, here we go, the Pennsylvania Pope. concert is going to be on June 23rd, two weeks from tonight, 7 p.m. right here. If for some reason the concert gets rained out, just so you know, we won't be doing them indoors, but we would reschedule it for the following week. The way our schedule is set up this year, we have two weeks between each concert, so in theory that should work if we get any rain. And uh, so, thank you, and uh, please stand if you're able and join us in our national anthem. <laughs> 